Begin your practice by gently warming up. Shift the weight from one foot to the other, introducing the body to the flow of yin and yang. The yin is when you utterly relax the empty side of the body, your shoulders, your jaw, your chest and your belly. The yang is when you deepen into the root underneath the weight-bearing foot, feeling the support of the ground. Taking your mind into your belly, turn your body gently from side to side, keeping the spine straight, shifting the weight from foot to foot. Allow the arms to utterly relax, and then the heel of each hand to gently tap the Dan Chen in the middle of the center of the body and the middle of your back on each turn. Breathe, relax the shoulders, chest, belly and jaw. Have the knees slightly bent. And then shift your weight into the back foot, lifting the front empty toe. As you do this, ensure that both toes face the front as you come back to the front. There's a big shift from the weight from one foot to the other. It's like moving backwards. So ensure that you make this movement begin from the Dan Chen, the center of the body, halfway between the pubic bone and the belly button. Breathe. And then allow yourself to settle into horse riding posture and connect your feet to the ground and connecting heaven and earth while staying really rooted. Allow yourself to stretch up to heaven and then visualize a shower of heavenly chi coming down through your body, eliminating and releasing any tensions or pains. And then just shake, shake the forearms, shake the each ankle and shake the torso and then bringing the fist of the right wrapped with the soft hand of the left in the yin yang bow acknowledge the space before you start your practice and now follows a demonstration of the complete short form it is better just to watch this as the view is from the front. It isn't a mirror image and if the practitioner tries to follow it will be very confusing. You will notice the movements are slow and relaxed. To begin with a beginner will find this quite difficult because most of the time we rush mentally and physically and our anxieties and worries create hardness in our body. The short form is a journey from simplicity and as we proceed through the form the movements get more complicated requiring a deepening awareness as we practice and travel through the form. To begin with, the practitioner, the new beginner, may have an eagerness to learn the whole form. But one of the first qualities that the serious and committed practitioner develops is patience. After a while, the practitioner realizes that it is a process and not an achievement. Each movement has a martial art application and each movement challenges the practitioner in a different way. One of the biggest challenges early on is our own lack of self-worth. So many people start Tai Chi, so many people do not continue, having a sense that I'm not good enough and I can't do this. The first three postures help us to overcome these thoughts. The first posture is attention, the second is preparation, 
And the third posture is a backward circle, the beginning. And the backward circle represents bringing towards us all that which we have an aversion to, including any negative thoughts for us to think about and dissolve. Some of the difficulties of Tai Chi practice arise from the essence of the philosophy in Tai Chi and Qigong. We use the posture of a child with the wisdom of an adult. So often as we get older, we sentimentalize our childhood, forgetting it is a place of negotiating a strange environment without any rule books. And the child always wants to grow up. So when we are older, to revisit the soft suppleness and ease in the body of a child can feel uncomfortable and naked. It is very scary to begin with. Through our life, through the challenges and obstacles we meet, if we meet them with anxiety and worry, then this builds into an armour not only around our vulnerable heart, but also in our bodies. Stiffness in the shoulders, the back, tightness. And when we practice Tai Chi, we're gradually letting go, dissolving these tightnesses that arise. The other thing we're managing is our changing physicality. I know for myself, having been a professional dancer, to now this particular posture, squatting single whip, is meant to be done with a really deep bend. I have never been able to do it, as I started Tai Chi in 1986, after a serious injury. My teacher taught me how to sink my energy through my body, instead of having to physically bend. This is encouraging for other practitioners who come to learn Tai Chi, and they can gradually give up the expectation of doing it right but finding a rightness that is correct for them. This takes courage sometimes when we're standing next to somebody who has a more alert physicality. So the self-defense aspect of Tai Chi does have physical martial art applications. For me, most of the self-defense is a psychological awareness of where I react. So a lot of the steps in Tai Chi stay in the back leg and this represents having space in the mind where we take ourselves out of reaction, habitual reaction, into a place of consideration and reflection in our lives. The form itself is like a little treasure chest. It's a wonderful thing to be able to have, to practice daily and particularly when life presents us with really challenging obstacles. To have the practice of Tai Chi to find 10 minutes of being able to be peaceful, grounded, relaxed, and breathing deeply offers a space of equilibrium and balance in sometimes a very turbulent world. So the practitioner all the time maintains an awareness of where the ground is, the spine, the breath, the belly. Through the practice we start to notice where we're holding tension. And instead of trying to get rid of any tension, we simply allow it and breathe softly into it. The tension has usually built up over years and hasn't been planned. So its release may take quite a long time if we have been habitually building it for a long time. Continually breathing into the belly, sinking into the root, feeling and allowing the ground to support us. All this offers 
strength to the legs, subtle core strength, and a calm and confidence in the mind. establish the place where we started. There's a deep simplicity to practicing Tai Chi, a letting go of striving, doing less, which is quite shocking when people start to practice seriously, how little needs to be done, the least amount of energy for the greatest effect. Now you see the short form as though you are standing behind the teacher. This offers the opportunity to simply flow along with the movements. We do this by letting go of striving, of trying, of attempting to get anything right. We simply relax, breathe, and ground ourselves, softening the mouth, the shoulders, the belly, being aware of the floor, and allow ourselves to follow the movements. We connect to a more childlike way of learning, where we're not striving, we're not trying, we're simply playing. So any mistakes we may perceive are not mistakes, but discoveries. As we play the form, we notice when we start trying, when we get tight, and we breathe deeply into the belly and relax, and adopt an attitude of open-mindedness, of curiosity, of space. As we relax, we connect to the innate wisdom of the body, the body that navigated its way through the strangeness of childhood without a rule book and survived. So we start to discover where our feet are, how it feels to allow the belly to lead us, to deepen the breath, to soften the shoulders, the mouth, the belly, to allow all the muscles in the body to release, to relax, to soften. We let our spine find a dignified place in our body. We feel our head floating upwards through the back of the neck. We drop our chest to allow the breathing to move into the back where the main part of our lungs are. And most of all, we drop into the belly and from there into the feet. So we allow the ground to support us. We give up hanging on and let go into being supported. As we allow ourselves to flow, to play the form, we have a sense of moving from the Dan Chen field of elixir in the center of the body which is between the pubic bone and the belly button. And we allow the shoulders and our head to be carried by the Dan Chen. So we adopt a soft gaze. 
So the head is turned by the belly, not the neck. And this soft gaze opens our vision. So our peripheral vision becomes a conscious place of perception. Hunter vision. And this deepens into our inner environment as well as our exterior environment. As we breathe, as we relax, we become more present with what is happening. Without striving, without grasping, simply being present, being in the midst of our own experience of what it feels like to flow with ease, with groundedness, with awareness, soft awareness. As we return to the childlike way of learning, we let go the striving, trying, judgmental and critical manner that we might have picked up as a way to learn things. We reconnect to our innate way of learning through the body, through that peripheral perception through playfulness, curiosity, and discovery. Breathe. Relax. Allow. by practicing like this. It might feel too simple to begin with. But this is how we really learn. We learn in a deep way. We have a core, a visceral understanding. Later on, we may explore more intellectually, but to begin with, we connect to the deep essence of Tai Chi ultimate form, supreme form of boxing, that martial art which has at its core the practice of compassion, the preservation of life, healing, meditation and martial art. Breathe, relax, Allow and root. Allow the body to discover the shapes. Allow our bodies to speak to us. And ending in great simplicity. Awareness. Tension preparation beginning and ward off left. Start with the feet together, sink into the right foot, yield to the left, step to the left. Then change weight and the right toe comes round as you come round to the front and the arms come around onto two cushions of air. Then the beginning posture is the backward circle where the arms reach out and then come back down and softly go back down to two cushions of air. Then sink into the left foot and bring the arms into a, holding a circle. Empty the left leg as you come into the right. Take a step forward, stay in the right leg as you yield and then come forward with the right hand on a cushion of air. And now from the back view, we start with the feet together, sink, empty the left leg, step to the left. Then change weight, the arms come around with the toe. Breathe, the backward circle, the beginning posture. Sink, relax, breathe. Come into the left leg, hold the circle in front of your sternum, relax the shoulders. 
Now the left foot steps forward and wide. Stay in the right foot as you yield and then come forward into the left for ward off left. Yield to the right, sinking into the left leg, allowing the arms to come to hold the circle. Empty the right leg and take a step. Yielding to the right, bring the right hand up in front of the left, so that the fingertips of the left hand are pointing into the palms of the right. And now we look from the back view. Yield to the right. Allow the right leg to really relax. Stay in the left leg as you begin the yield to the right and then move into the right foot, bringing the left toe around. This detail shows how the hand should be and also takes us forward into the roll back and swinging, dropping the elbow so the hands come together. For this next move, you stay in the right leg and yield to the right. The left hand comes into a ward off and the right hand just lifts. As you sink into the left leg and yield to the left, release that left hand and then place the palms of the hands together. The fingertips of the left hand point to the ceiling and the right is in a ward off. It is not synchronistic. That posture is called press. So here it is from the back view. You stay in the right leg as you yield to the right. Left hand in ward off, the right fingertips pointing to the ceiling. Right hand in ward off and now the palms come together. The fingertips of the left hand point to the ceiling. Yield back and now the fingertips point to the ceiling and the elbows drop. For the next posture, single whip. You yield back into the left leg and stay in the left leg and make sure the right foot comes right round to the front. And here, at the end of it, you come into the le right leg and stay in the right leg before you come forward into push. So in the middle of this one, after you have yielded back into the left leg, and here we go, back into the left leg, and yielding around and getting the right foot really around to the front, you then stay in the left leg as you make the hook. Then, only then, do you come into the right. Single weight, stay in the right leg as you yield before you finish the posture coming forward into the left leg with the left hand in the middle of the body. And here we have a detail of how the arms are as you do that little yield in the middle of it. To make the hook, you bring all the fingers together, drop the elbow and the wrist is raised. Lifting hands, yielding to the right, you open the arms wide and a huge ward off, relaxing the right foot. And then you empty the right leg and put it down on the heel. Then you yield to the right again and bring the hands to a diagonal position. Then you yield, roll back, right hand to the floor, left to the ceiling, and then you stay in the left leg as the heel of the left hand comes into the elbow of the right. So here we are from the back view. As you yield to the right, everything opens. It's the biggest ward off in the form. Empty the right foot, yield back. Yielding, emptying that right leg. Now here you'll want to go into the right leg, but most of the weight stays in the left leg. And now you come through to both feet into a ward off, moving into the right foot, yielding to the left, brush left knee, empty the left leg, put it on the ball of the foot, roll up to white crane. This, our last little bit is quite complicated, but it ends with a brush left knee and push. So on the end of white crane, you need to be really connected to the Dan Shen so you can do those subtle turns. So it starts with coming through both feet into ward off, brush left knee, sink, empty the left foot and then roll up to white crane. Then you yield a tiny bit to the left, yield to the right, drop the right arm and bring the left up up and then roll back. Empty the left foot, brush left knee, the left, right hand comes to the shoulder, down the zip and up. Play guitar starts with stepping the right foot, the root of it, up towards the left. 
yielding to the right as you come into the right foot, empty the left onto the heel, and then yield to the left. Yield to the right as you then go into brush left knee and push, ending up in bow and arrow in the left leg. In the back view, you can see that moving the root, yielding into the right leg, yielding to the right, empty the left, and you yield to the left as you do play guitar. From that position, both fingertips are facing to the side of the room, directly in front of you. The next posture starts with the yielding back diagonally on the left, lifting the left toe. The right hand comes down into a fist and the left hand, the fingertips face the floor. Still facing the corner, bring the knee forward and then the right hand up into a ward off. Tiny step, step into the left, stay in the left leg as you deflect downwards and punch. So the first part of this, we change direction. We've ended up facing straight on. Then you yield back to the left. And so you have to bring the left side of your body back. Drop the hand, still facing the left. This next little movement starts. And then you still face the corner. Deflect down, we're still in the back foot. Then coming forward into the front foot for the end of the posture. Stay in the left foot, yield to the left. Open the right hand to the ceiling. And then as you yield to the right, let the left hand make a ward off and scrape the forearm of the right hand along the left. Yield to the left and then sink forward into push. Stay in the left foot, yield, and then coming around, changing weight into crossing hands. So you stay in the left leg as you yield to the left and open the right hand and then come back into the right, yield right, yield left, sinking forward into bow and arrow. Stay in the left as you come around and then yielding, changing weight as you come into crossing hands. Yield to the right, sinking into the left leg, ward off right and the left hand drops and comes out to the front. Staying in the left leg, you then reach in a straight line with the right heel. Staying in the left leg, turn, come down the zip and change weight, facing the diagonal. Here it is easier to see the yield to the right and staying in the left foot. And that big step with the right foot out in line with the left heel and then to follow the journey of the right arm dropping and the left hand coming up. This posture is very similar to grasp sparrow's tail, but done on the diagonal. So the directions are a bit strange to begin with. So you yield and stay in the right leg, come into the left, sink, and then you go forward onto the diagonal, yield, and come back into the diagonal. The next posture is the single whip, this time done on the diagonal. So the same as the one earlier on in the form, but this time going from one diagonal to the other diagonal and sinking into the left foot in bow and arrow to end. And here it is a little bit easier again to see what goes on from watching from a different angle. So you can actually stay, see the staying in the right leg coming into the left, staying in the left leg coming forward into the right, yielding and all on the diagonal, sinking back into the left foot, stay in the left foot as you yield back on the hook, and then really yielding into the right leg as that left toe comes into the new diagonal. Sink back into the right foot, and allow the weight then to come forward facing the side of the room into the left and lightly put the right foot down beside it. Staying in the left, yield to the left. Then as you lead, yield to the right, come into the right foot, heel down of the left and then turn to face the side of the room. 
So sinking back into the right, turning and yielding to the left, and the feet are side by side, but the right foot is slightly turned out. Stay in the left, and only when you yield to the right, come into the right foot. And then stay in the right leg as you punch under elbow. As you yield, the left arm swoops out and down in the scooping motion, and the right hand just drops onto the hip in a punch. The back of the left hand faces the front of the tiger's mouth, the ceiling. Keep the posture open. Now you stay in the right leg as you yield to the right, and then yield back to face the front. So the arms, one arm to the front, one to the side, they stay there in space. Empty the left foot and yield back and then stay in the left leg for the end of the posture. Repeat on the left side. And here you can see from the other side how the view is right in front of you, but we use the peripheral vision as we step back. This is one of the more difficult postures in the Tai Chi form, as psychologically we don't like going backwards. The monkey refers to the monkey of the mind, all the anxieties and busyness that our mind creates for us. This detail shows you the alignment as from a different angle. So the camera in front of the practitioner, showing how the weight then stays in the back foot even though the impulse is forward, we resist that impulse and sink down into the down chin and down into the back foot. The third repulse monkey is similar to the first one. Staying in the back leg, stepping backwards, yielding to the left as you step backwards and staying in the left leg. And now stay in the left leg to hold the circle, come into the right, sink back into the left leg and take the right foot to the diagonal staying in the left and only at the end coming into the right foot. The essence of repulse monkey is the ability to stay in the back foot. So even at the end when one connects to the Dan Chen and the impulse is outwards stay in the back foot. Here stay in the back foot now you come into the right. Make sure the left gets all the way around. If you can take a bigger step there, do so and really extend from the upper arm. Here you've ended up in the right foot, but stay in the right foot for the beginning of waving hands in clouds. As you take the step to the left, overstep so that when you step up, you're just a normal shoulder width apart. As you do this, stay in the left foot in order to come back and then stay in the right foot as you return with the left hand. And at the last one, you make a hook and stay in the left leg. The staying in the right leg at the beginning of waving hands and clouds is more visible when you watch from the back. And as you come round, you stay in that right leg. Take a huge step to the left, the feet straight, and then stay in the left leg. Now here, stay in the right leg, and then as you come back, stay in the left leg. And on the sixth one, you stay in the left leg, make the hook, and then both feet face the front. Here you keep your weight in the left leg as you yield to the right, and then it's exactly the same as a normal single whip. Come into the right leg, yield and yield again before coming forward to the left. Stay in the left leg, come into the right. Stay in the right leg, and this is much deeper than what I can do, and you end up in a bow and arrow. Relax the shoulders, yield to the right, and then as you yield to the left, you come into the right leg, empty the left, yield to the left, and then drop the shoulders and come forward. Stay in the left leg as you go to the corner, around to the front, 
back to the corner and stay in the right leg before you come up to the bow and arrow. Sinking into the left leg, drop the right arm and bring the right knee up with the foot over the knee, the left hand on a cushion of air, step back, yield to the right and then as you sink into the right leg, bring the left knee up. This posture is very strong on the left leg, so sink into the left leg and ensure the right foot doesn't drag along the floor as it comes into the golden rooster posture. Sink and really release so that the yield brings the left knee up. Now you yield to the right and bring the hands into lifting hands. And then you take a step with the left, swing the left hand and then come into crossing hands. Yield and then the foot goes out, down and then comes up to in front of the knee. Stay on the right leg as you yield to the right and then stepping you sink and swing, yield to the left and then you yield to the right and the left step up, open, kick up with toe and then bring the foot over the knee. Separate left foot is a mirror image of separate right foot. Yield to the left, step to the right, yield to the right, and then step up, yielding to the left for the kick up with toe. At the end, you bring the knee up and then across into two ward offs, brush left knee, and finish in the left foot. Staying in the left leg, lifting hands, step, yield to the right, crossing hands, and step up kick up with toe and then yield to the right and come to ward off, brush left knee and push, ending up in the left leg. Step up as in play guitar and yield back into the right foot. Empty the left and place it on the ball of the foot very lightly, keeping the lower back straight, bend the knees and point the fingers diagonally straight down, let them go and come up, in ward off, weight in the back foot. Step up, sink back, empty the left, relax the left ankle, keep the weight in the back leg, make sure the arms are in ward off and not wide. The hands become quite straight with the fingers and thumbs together. The fingertips of the right hand point forward and the side of the left hand rests on the heel of the right hand. So that goes diagonally down and a lovely, quite together ward off at the end. Empty the left foot, put it down in the bow and arrow with the heel first, the foot flat and then just yield keeping most of the weight in the right leg then sink down and yield to the left into the left foot into the right foot sinking back into the left and stay in the left leg until the very end of the posture so on this posture the weight stays in the back foot as you do iron fan penetrates back little bit of weight in the left leg. Now it comes into the left as you yield to the left. Get all the weight into the right, bring the left toe around, yield into the left, empty the right leg, stay empty. Now just move forward into bow and arrow. Yield to the left, come into the left foot. The right fist faces the floor. The left hand faces the ceiling, empty the right leg and then come into that tiny position. Weight in the right, keep the weight in the right, deflect downwards, into the left for the punch. Yield out of the right leg, into the left leg, through ward off and then the left hand faces the ceiling, the right hand the floor. 
and then coming into the right leg, staying in the right leg, yield to the left, forward into the left. Yield back into the right leg and open the arms into a huge ward off to the diagonal and come forward into the left, crossing hands with the right hand nearest to you. Open up and kick down with heel and then turn into ward off. Brush left knee and end up in the left leg, yielding, stepping into the right leg, stay in the right leg and then keeping the back straight for punch downwards diagonally. Yield back diagonally into the right leg with the biggest ward off. Open the arms and come forward into a lunge with the right hand nearest to you on crossing hands. Open up, kick down with heel, then bring the knee across, the arms across before brush right knee and push. Yield back into the left and then brush left knee and punch downwards diagonally with the back straight. Yield back to the corner, into the right leg, open the arms, and then come forward into the holding the circle, into the rest of grass sparrow's tail, right foot, left foot, left foot into the right, yielding back, and then fingertips to the ceiling, coming back into single whip, stay in the left foot, stay in the left, into the right foot, stay in the right foot, as you step to the left, stay in the right leg, forward into the left. Yield back into the right leg, into the corner, ward off, then hold the circle. And then it's as the grass sparrow's tail, stay in the right, coming into the left, stay in the left, drop the elbows. Release the lower back, breathe, release, stay in the left leg, stay in the left leg and then out into the right. Now stay in the right leg as you yield to the left and the fingertips to the ceiling. Sinking into the right leg, coming round to the front. Both arms ward off with the left hand nearest to you. Empty now the right leg and then sweep forward into the right. Step to the left, stay in the right leg and then come forward into the left. Right leg, left leg. Empty the right, yield forward into the right leg. Yielding into the right leg as you come around two ward offs sink back step to the next side stay in the left and then forward into the right step to the corner yield to the left sink to the corner coming around staying in the right leg then into the left stay in the left leg to the corner sink This is the same as the first side, but it's to the different corners, so it can be confusing. So getting the legs clear, left leg, right leg. Empty the left, yield into the right. Into the right leg, yielding into the left, stepping into the corner, into the right leg. Yielding into the left leg, taking the foot forward, yielding into the right, to the corner, yield, and then into the left leg. Stay in the right leg as you do the final step, into the corner, into the right leg. Yield to the left, and bring the palms flat to the floor, making a triangle, and then to the stomach and out in a certain little small circle. Then it's grass sparrow's tail, 
and sink, soften, breathe. And again we do the single whip. Here, all the time, finding the root, staying in the left leg and then into the right leg. Soften the shoulders, empty and drop the elbows. Yield to the left and drop the left hand so it faces the floor. Bring the right hand level to it. And as you come around and yield back into the right, the hands do like a little semicircle towards you and out. And then we go into Grass Sparrow's Tail, exactly as we've done before in the fall. Release the lower back, drop the shoulders, find the floor, breathe, relax and lead from the Dan Chen. So here we have another opportunity to explore, grasp a sparrow's tail and single whip. Stay in the left leg and sink and face the left corner and then come into the right leg and face the front. Stay in the right leg and squatting single whip into making a fist, bringing the right foot forward on the ball of the foot, step back, brush left knee and slap the left foot on the ball of the foot. The squatting single whip is far deeper than I do it. If you've got great knees, you stay in the right leg and allow the left leg to slide out keeping that wide as you step forward lift the right foot off the floor stepping back very very loose left foot is on the ball of the foot yield to the left arms lifting hands sweeping the left foot across and the arms outstretched you put the left heel onto the floor and on the ball of the right, end up with the feet in horse riding posture. Sweep the right leg around and then lift the knee at the end. On this posture, it's really important to keep your mind on the ground, relaxed in the belly, lead from the Dan Chien. If you can, the right leg sweeps around and touches both hands, then lift the knee. Staying on the left leg, yield to the right and place the foot down on the floor. Yield to the right, bring the hands around and at the last moment come forward into the right. The left hand goes forward into punch. Yield to the right, softly put the right on the floor. Yield, yield to the left, then come forward into the right. Step up, sink. Empty the right leg and come around into that tiny position. Right hand across in ward off. Deflect downwards and punch. Here you step up, the left foot stays behind the right. Sink into the left and then yield to the right to come around to this small position. Stay in the right leg, then end up in the left leg. Stay in the left leg, yield to the left. Coming into the right leg, yield to the right. Stay in the right to yield to the left, sink forward. Stay in the left, coming forward into the right, sink back into the left, crossing hands. Yield to the right, Step, yield to the left, bring the feet together into a tension. The end. Stay in the left, yield to the left, come into the right, and stay in the right, yield to the left, sink forward. Stay in the left, come into the right, sink back, empty. Stay in the left leg, yield to the right, yield to the left and into eagle posture for the 